Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selam ala eşref el enbiya ve seyri el mürselin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem. Rabbi yaşrah li sadri ve yasir li amri ve ahlul uqtatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Allahumma salli ala seyyidina Muhammedin miftahi babi rahmeti illa adada ma fi ilmi la salatun ve salaman daimeyni bi devamun muqi la ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve man wala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my brothers and sisters. Wa alaikum salam. Alhamdulillah for the opportunity to gather and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember the one who took us by the hand to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who came to take you and I by the hand into the Divine Presence. And what a blessed occasion that is in the month of Rajab and approaching Laylat Isra wa Mi'raj, this blessed ascension. And may we all ascend in the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ to our Creator. So, uh, inshallah, we're honored to be here amongst you and the people that remember, and it's a great blessing. So, inshallah, with that, I wanted to begin with a poem about the Prophet ﷺ. And this poem is summation of the description we find of the Prophet ﷺ in the early books of Shema'il, of descriptions of him, and particularly when I read the 20th book of the Ihya Ulum Adin, which is this great summation of the character of the Prophet ﷺ, that Imam al-Ghazali is a great scholar. He wrote this encyclopedia of Islam, 40 books covering every dimension of the spiritual life of a believer. Even talking about things we might consider mundane matters, like earning a livelihood and how it, if approached correctly, will be a means for us to draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the very center of that, the spiritual axis upon which that collection of 40 books turns is the 20th book, right in the heart, and it's the book on the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa because he, as our mother Aisha radiallahu anha said, he is the Qur'an walking. His character was the Qur'an. And one of our friends studied at Al-Azhar. And when he was there, he asked the Shaykh, he said, I want to study tafsir. What is the best book of tafsir? And the Shaykh said, he was in his office, he said, get that book off the shelf. So he got the book. And it was a biography of the Prophet sallallahu <laughs> The best commentary on the Quran is his life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this was a poetic rendition, sum summarizing book twenty, uh, book twenty of the Ihya. Can you imagine one who was the gentlest of men, while being the most brave and just of all who've been? One who conquered all desires of self that make men weak who granted all who asked him precisely what they seek, whom only jewels poured out his mouth whenever he would speak, who was the gem amongst the stones of men who shined unique, a selflessness and generosity that some would say was merely myth until they'd seen the lovers of his way, who used to mend his sandals and used to patch his clothes, who used to serve his family whenever he was home, who had a noble shyness, not gazing long upon a face, who honored all he ever met, be they king or be they slave, who always found himself at home the most amongst the poor, who never angered for himself, but only for his Lord. Always just, always truthful, conscious of the one, even if it brought discomfort to himself and those he loved. A satiated stomach his whole life was rarely felt, not due to poverty, but preference of others to himself. Who knew the time of day by sun and the direction by the stars, 
who would walk amongst his enemies without a single guard. Devoid of any lower self, just humble and serene, eloquent but not verbose, just precisely what he means. Whom all within his company felt light and sacred cheer, whom there was not a thing within creation that he feared, who loved to play with children and run races with his wives, who would join the festivities and honor customs of all tribes. When people yelled and lost their cool around him, he was calm, who asked forgiveness for his enemies even as they did him wrong. Who kept a goat, he'd milk himself for people in his house, whose wives, when asked about him, said he was the perfect spouse. Who never looked down on a pauper or flattered once a prince, but called every soul unto the one without even a flinch. Every single gorgeous trait of character he had of noble lineage, yet he was the orphan of his clan. One imbued with wisdom and piercing inner sight, yet he was the unlettered one who would neither read nor write. All knowledge and trait of character unflawed were placed inside his very being directly by Allah. The way to salvation and triumph after death to detachment and joy in life with each and every breath. To walk the righteous path and never falter come what may. And may Allah give us success in following his way. They call him el the trustworthy, the honest. And we call him beloved, our master, Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala alayhi. And alhamdulillah, I remember that one of the first things when I was learning about the life of the Prophet وسلم, that most moved me was the story of the Isra wa Mi'raj. And I love everything you highlight and you brought the point that the Prophet Sallallahu traveled these vast distances and ascended. There was a <laughs> right horizontal travel and then a vertical travel. And he paved the way for us to ascend into the Divine Presence and brought us back the Salat, which is the Isra of the Mu'min, the Mi'raj of the Mu'min, the ascension of the believer. But as you pointed out, the greatest miracle that was to happen that night is that he returned from the presence to show us the light. The greatest miracle was not that he ascended the seven heavens, not that he passed where Jibreel said, I can go no further. Not that he reached the low tree and the two bows distance, O oh Edna. But it's that out of love for you and me, he returned back, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, as was mentioned, we have a new book and it's called The Art of Remembrance. And it has multiple meanings. But I was reflecting on what the Prophet Sallallahu brought us. And if you think about our deen, every aspect of it is dhikr. That not only is the prayer dhikr, not only is the Qur'an a dhikr, not only is the Prophet Sallallahu himself a reminder, but he left us a blueprint for being in a state of remembrance in every moment of every day. And from ha when we sit, there's a dhikr. To when we stand, there's a dhikr. To when we wake up, there's a dhikr. All the way till we sleep, there is a dhikr. And alhamdulillah, we experience great gratitude to the Prophet ﷺ, as well as the scholars of our ummah who have preserved this and passed this down. 
there are religions who aren't even 100% sure what language their prophets spoke. The Christians are like that. But yet we know the exact words the Prophet ﷺ said in every moment, waking state, stillness. Every breath that he took was dhikr wasallam. And so the Prophet ﷺ was calling us to be in this state of remembrance. And it could be said that his way is the art of remembrance. In fact, Islam is the art of remembrance. How to be in a state of remembrance in every breath. And in that sense, we are all artists, <laughs> right? You are a painter each moment you make a mark. When you die, you step out of the painting and look at your art. Your life is your art. One of my sheikhs told me, he said, Alhamdulillah, you're a poet, and that's a beautiful thing. He said, but it's one thing to write poems, and it's another thing to make your life a poem for God. That what we seek is that our life is a work of art for Allah. It is an offering for Allah. And your life is your work of art. Each moment you are making a mark, and when you die, you will see your artwork. Will it be beautiful? Will it be ugly? And Allah is Al Ghafur Rahim. Allah can erase some of the ugly marks on your artwork <laughs> if you turn to Him. And so this is what we hope for, and this is what we turn to Allah for, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we wanted to make a book that was not only with poetry but in fact was like the great manuscripts of our tradition. Every aspect of what Muslims did was done with Ihsan. Because Allah is beautiful and loves beauty. And so if you look at the traditional manuscripts, ancient books, in the great museums around the world, people fill the museums to look at the books of our tradition. Wow, look at how they did them. Look at the leather work, the binding. Look at the calligraphy and the handwritten. And so we wanted to make an ode to the great books of the past. And this is what we've done here with the Art of Remembrance. And alhamdulillah, we had it printed in Turkey. And may Allah bring His mercy to those suffering in the aftermath of the earthquake in Turkey, and as well as in Syria, inshallah. And so this is what we're here for us to remember. And Mawlana Rumi very beautifully put it. He said that there was a servant who was sent from a great king. And the great king said, go to the marketplace and bring me back a short list of things. And you have all day, just be back before the market closes at sundown. And so the servant went out and he said, alhamdulillah, I have all day. So as he's going to the market, he sees a festival. There was a fair. And there was all the rides and the games and everything that was happening. And so he said, I have all day. I can take some time and enter into this fair. And so he entered in and he, he rode the rides and he made friends and he interacted with people and he played the games and he enjoyed himself. But very quickly he lost track of time. And he got so engrossed in the festival and the fair that by the time he looked up, he realized that the sun was setting and he had missed the market and he had to return to the king empty handed. So Mulana Rumi is saying that we are the servant sent into this world and Allah gave us a few easy tasks. And we can partake of the festival and the fair and the sweet things and the rides and all those things. But we should never forget to remember the purpose for which we came. So we don't return empty handed. And this is the art of remembrance. So we pray that Allah makes us people of remembrance. And I wanted to read you the title poem from the book. 
Remember until it seeps into your bones like the December wind. Remember and remember and remember until remembrance wins. Till all remember wins, remember when there was nothing but remembrance in the presence of beginningless's never-ending present tense. Remember when there was nothing but remembrance in the presence of beginningless's never-ending present tense. Remember till a voice proclaims what did we forget again? Till the part that has resistance to remember starts to giving in. Remember then, remember then, remember it again, again. A spirit greater than the universe has come and hid in skin. Remember the forgiver to the point that you forget your sin. Remembrance the giver until all your gifts are sent from him. Remember it's the giver until when you give, it's really him. Giving and receiving what is need if you are given him. Remember the reviver until when you die, you live again. Remember the annihilator till your eye subsists in him. Remember the inspired one who taught us how to get to him. Peace upon his soul and on his family and his holy friends. Peace upon his soul and on his family and his holy friends. The one who rose to even higher than an angel ever dare ascend. Then out of love and mercy he returned into the world of men. Remember the all-seeing until all that you can see is him. And if you cannot witness this, then know this witness witnesses. Through your seeing vision, even though your feeble vision's dim, and when you draw near until he loves you, who is seeing then? You didn't throw when you threw, but we threw through your blessed hand. You didn't throw when you threw, but we threw through your blessed hand. Are you surprised the Most High could throw through a mortal man? Hasn't he told you he molded you from something insignificant? Then spoke to your clay as he blew his spirit into it. Remember the beloved until love itself transcends your skin and radiates beyond you into everything that was and is and will be if he wills it to be in a million moments. Each affair he begins again. Polish the mirror so his light you reflect within. The rust that has formed on its face is forgetfulness. Each breath is a priceless chance to remember him. And the polish of hearts is the art of remembrance. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala alayhi. Sallallahu alayhi. So alhamdulillah, we're all artists. The takeaways, we're all artists. And one of them said, in the pre-modern world, every man was a particular type of artist. But in the modern world, the artist is a particular type of man. No, everyone was a craftsman or woman. Everyone was a creator. Everyone was dedicated to their art. And everyone understood that the goal of it was not to be a poet or a bookbinder or a calligrapher, or a weaver, but that all of those were disciplines that, if approached correctly, would transform you and your soul. And Titus Burkhart wrote a book about Fez called The Fez City of Islam, which he was talking about pre-modern Islamic cities and how they produce saints. 
And he talked about the comb maker who made combs in the traditional way out of bone. And this comb maker said, I've been making combs like my master made combs, like his master made combs, like his master made combs, all the way back. He said, but now, just in our generation, these plastic combs are coming in from China, and I can't compete, because mine takes a whole day to make. They can sell a hundred for the price of mine. He said, but the way that I was taught by my master is that the comb is a spiritual thing. Because just as it has many teeth, but its spine is one, likewise the universe has many forms, but one is behind them all. <clears throat> and so, we are not created to be consumers, but creators. Because we are created with the names of Allah. وَهُوَ الْخَالِقَ الْبَارِيَ الْمُصَوِّرِ لَهُوَ الْأَسْمَاءَ الْحُسْنَى he is the creator, the fashioner, the former. And we are to embody his names, the most beautiful names. And so, alhamdulillah, it's, it's a blessing to be with artists of the sacred. And these arts that we're, inshallah, part of the honor of reviving in our tradition, even in the English language, that... When Islam spread into India, or into Turkey, or into Africa, or far east, into China, or Java, what happened? The people became poets. Because the Quranic revelation washed over their souls, and it infused them with meaning, and when you're experiencing meaning, you can't but desire to express it. And so it is hoped that our brothers here, Sidi Abdullah, Sidi Uthman, these great efforts to infuse the English language with the barakah of the Muhammadan revelation will be a means to transform not only our hearts but our societies, inshallah. And so it's an honor to be amongst you, and uh, may we walk in the way of the Prophet. ﷺ. And in fact, at the end of the day, and this is what I'll end with, is that Allah is the artist. And the cosmos is his art. And the true art is to allow Allah to write the qualities of the Prophet ﷺ on the canvas of your soul. That is the art. That is the art. So may we uh, be infused with the art of remembrance. Alhamdulillah. Wa shukrulillah.